Okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome to all on this uh, occasion of Human Rights International Day. And uh, thank you for joining us for our fifth uh, uh, women empowerment talk. Um, this is an initiative that we as ULEX launched um, uh, back as part of our 1325 resolution anniversary activities. And we kept on carrying on during 16 days of activism campaign. And we will also continue with this kind of talks um, in the next year. So the idea is to, to create and to have a platform where we can uh, discuss several topics, have uh, relevant stakeholders on the platform to raise issues and to really to, to raise more awareness about certain topics. Um, today, the topic, the, the talk will be about mental health of victims of violence against women, advancing the implementation of the Istanbul Convention. Um, and the idea is really to discuss the whole phenomenon of mental health of victim of uh, violence, including mental health of children witnessing, witnessing domestic violence, uh, as well as the phenomenon of re-traumatization of victims. Um, before I introduce the speaker, just some technical details. I mean, we're all used to Zoom by now, but you have the interpretation option. So um, English, uh, Serbian and Albanian, you just have to select the relevant channel. Uh, if there are any questions, you can um, uh, put them in the chat and uh, maybe at the end we will, uh, we will address them with the speakers. Mm -hmm. um, my idea will be first uh, to start with our two psychologists to join today and uh, just to, um, you know, to discuss a bit about more the, the technical side of the topic. And then uh, we are very honored today that we're joined by Katarina. Uh, Katarina, she is a survivor of domestic violence, and um, and she will be she's willing to 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 share with us her her story. And um, so let me first introduce um, um, also Jurjica Kazic. Hello, Jurjica. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Jurjica is a psychologist by profession. She is she currently works um, for women's rights NGOs and. Um, and um, you, I hope you hear me well, yes. Can and um, um, she also has, she, she also, she's also a human rights uh, activist. She worked for several UN agency, UNDP, UNICEF, and uh, she has extensive knowledge as researcher also. And um, yeah, and she, at the moment she's working with the victims of domestic violence as well as also children uh, witnessing domestic violence. Thank you, Georgica, for joining us today. Thanks a lot. And um, we also have uh, Luleta, uh, Luleta Berisha uh, Golopeni. I hope I pronounced her name properly. Uh, she is project manager and psychologist at KRCT, Kosovo Rehabilitation Center for Torture Victims. Uh, Luleta is currently managing the project support to reintegration and rehabilitation of children returned from Syria, a project that KRCT founded, um, uh, it is funded by US Embassy. In Kosovo, and um, uh, her working experience includes more than 15 years of engagement in diverse national and international organizations, such as Exactly Care City, uh, GIS, but also Save the Children. And, um, and she has also extensive knowledge with working with mar marginalized groups. Thank you, Lulieta, for joining us today also. Thank and you. as I mentioned, also I'm very honored to be joined today by Katarina. Hello, Katarina, how are you from? And um, as I mentioned, Katarina uh, will then share with us her story and how um, support services assisted her during her case and really her, her path. Um, okay, I will start. My idea is to first pose two questions, both to, um, to Georgica and to Lulieta, and then, as I mentioned, we will, uh, we will give the floor to Katarina. Um, so my first question, maybe I will start with Georgica, will be uh, about this. Um, violence against women uh, can have lifelong implications, not only for their physical health, but also for the mental health. Um, recent data that I was reading from the European Coalition to End Violence Against Women uh, uh, said how between 50 to 60% of women using mental health support services actually experience domestic violence. Uh, furthermore, we know that victims can undergo further multiple forms of uh, victimization and re-traumatization, even after experiencing violence. Um, and all of this, of course, also has an impact on their rehabilitation. 
So um, can you share with us your opinion on how far is this aspect addressed in Kosovo and what services are available to victims in Kosovo? Thank you, Georgita. We cannot hear, I don't know if this audience can hear the translation. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, I can hear the speaker very, very ah. weakly, broken. If we can ask her to start again. Okay, sorry, Judith, can you start again? We couldn't. Uh, I think Biliana should be muted. Ah. Chiara, Biliana okay. should be muted. Biliana, can you mute herself? Oh, wait, I will mute. Okay, uh, let's try again, Georgica, if you, let's see if the audio works. Okay. Something that I would like to say is that every woman exposed to gender-based uh, violence uh, has uh, certain emotional implications which are then solved even if there is, uh, there are services, uh, legally regulated services uh, for uh, violence, uh, domestic violence. Here and in Serbia, we, the problem is that we're still a patriarchal society and uh, women are still exposed to uh, violence and victimization. When they decide to report the violence, uh, they receive support from the family, the society in general. I'm sorry, I cannot hear. The speaker is coming in broken, um, I'm sorry. Maybe, uh, Georgica, we hear you broken. Maybe, um, I don't know if the computer audio is a problem because the connection seems good, like your video works properly. Um, Amina, you hear Georgica now? Uh, I don't hear Amina, I don't hear Georgica. Can I continue? Or... Yeah, now I we hear you, okay. Okay. Super sorry, thank you. I'm sorry, I cannot hear again. Maybe it's breaking all the time. Right channel. No, I think our connection, maybe, um, uh, Georgica, if you remove the video, although we would like to see you, so maybe just to check if you will help with the connection, maybe. Removing the video. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I removed the video. Ah, okay. Now no, it should be better. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Okay. But at okay, least we, so can, we can hear you. you. <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry for my side. Uh, uh, and chronologically, we can talk about the process. We can present the process the victim goes through in the first situation. She doesn't receive the support from the family. In the community, the community should see uh, sees the uh, victim as the cause of the violence, and at the end of this pyramid, the provision providers of services have patriarchal uh, attitudes and are not trained enough. This is not a problem only in the Serbian community; that is a general problem in all over Kosovo. It's the problem with the mentality of the people, which reflects uh, also in the institutions that provide the services. When we talk about the secondary victimization or violence, we most uh, often uh, speak about those employed in the institutions who are support, supposed to provide uh, the victims with services. 
we see uh, viol violent behavior of the representatives of the institutions. So this is a direct institutional violence. Yeah. That could also be uh, a mentality or attitude that is not uh, uh, sensitized enough. And the victim feels that her experience is not being valued, what she's talking about. And uh, the other person may have a uh, personal uh, uh, maybe judgmental about what she is talking about. Such examples of such behavior are uh, inadequate tone of speaking, talking to the victim as if she is the guilty one, uh, as if she is uh, being uh, heard or questioned, as if she committed the, the crime, the violence. Uh, this kind of violence is uh, rarely talked about outside organizations dealing with the protection of victims. Uh, it is real, however, it exists and is uh, unfortunately very widely spread. In order to protect the victims from further trauma, it is necessary to educate. And also uh, a system is necessary that protects the victims from the violent per perpetrators of violence. Uh, the secondary victimization uh, is not uh, a product of uh, uh, intended, uh, such intended attitude towards the victims, uh, but it is rather uh, ignorance and deeply rooted uh, beliefs. What is characteristic in Serbian community is that victims, because of political decisions at the highest level, uh, must go through the divorce twice, uh, once through the Kosovo system and uh, for the second time through the Serbian system. And women mostly got married uh, within the Serbian, Serbian system that existed, while after the reintegration of uh, the judiciary, they had to divorce according to the Kosovo system, uh, although they are still married according to the Serbian system. I know this uh, sounds more, com most, more very complicated, but this is how it uh, works in our communities, in the Serbian community. It is a process uh, that is uh, very tiring for the victim and financially very demanding and also emotionally very uh, tiring. Many victims of, Nazi of uh, violence uh, do not have the financial means and they cannot afford to go to every hearing in Serbia to fi finalize the divorce. And it is uh, because uh, just like the traumatization process, uh, we also need, they also need to have a process of rehabilitation or uh, healing. If that process is uh, longer, which happens in such uh, situations when you have to go through two systems, then this uh, process keeps the victim uh, uh, closed or uh, uh, limited because uh, uh, this, this is something that I have uh, noticed in my work in general with the victims and also with uh, children, the way these things work. I am not interested in the legal aspect of uh, these problems because I'm a psychologist, but we cannot close our eyes before such problems, which, which are very evident. Not see you, Judith, so I don't know if you, okay. Um, th thank you, Georgia, yeah, for okay. this. I finished. Okay, okay, sorry, yes, because <laughs> that's the problem when we cannot see each other. Thank you. Um, no, it's interesting how also you mentioned like there are several aspects that contribute to further re-traumatization re of victims. So, uh, of course, because of the dual system in the north and, um, and within the Serbian community, so this is a further aspect uh, which uh, which in, um, impacts on re-traumatization and. Um, also, yeah, of course, like um, it's it also like the reference to the patriarchal society because, of course, re-traumatization re comes with attitude. So once again, as we often mention when we talk about gender-based violence and our addressing gender-based violence, again, the um, importance of um, yeah, name, really yeah. to, to attitude and changing attitude. And um, yeah, and also how, like, 
like you mentioned, that then the more re-traumatization is ongoing, then the, the fire is the healing process. So thanks a lot for all these points. And I'll pass the floor to Luleta, same question to you. How do you see the phenomenon and what services are available in Kosovo? Thank you, Luleta. Thank you. Um, should I try with the camera on or should I switch it? Oh, we, we hear you very well. So yes, okay. it's, it's good to okay. see you. <laughs> I'll switch to um, Albania now. Um, uh, thank you again for the invitation and with regards to this uh, topic we are honored to have been invited to participate in this virtual meeting because KRCT has more than 20 years of working experience with vulnerable groups amongst which I would specifically mention women that experienced sexual violence during the war in Kosovo. As a matter of fact, we as KRCT are not specifically dedicated to women and children that were subjected to domestic violence, but the main beneficiaries of our center are often victims of domestic violence too in their life due to the history they have gone through, specific uh, views or positions of theirs, the conditions in which uh, they live, and oftentimes this uh, revoke uh, the trauma they have been experiencing. The women that uh, experienced uh, sexual violence during the war often when interviewed and during our concrete work with them, they told us of uh, domestic violence cases as well. Insofar we could explore the reasons for such domestic violence, even after what has happened to them during the war, is that when their spouses or husbands in this case are aware of what had happened to their wives, they have this sensation of guilt and a series of negative emotions which are related to the event or events their families have gone through during the war. Oscar should be muted. So due to the inability to act and protect their wives and their daughters, often it happened that these individuals conserved these emotions in themselves and never talked about them. So if they preserve such uh, feelings and without working systematically with them, without processing and finding the ways to manage these feelings, it may happen that these could give rise to an aggressive behavior against the others around them. In this case, a member of the family, more concretely, a raped woman during the war. So these are revoked when the living conditions are changing on daily basis and may resemble such situations when the bad drama happened either directly or indirectly and during the pandemic this was quite evident now during the pandemic crisis with the aim of reducing the increasing number of domestic violence cases it was necessary to try and enable some sort of isolation or restriction of movement through the government measures, but also the fear of the people of contracting this virus or disease reminds them of these bad feelings and episodes they went through during the war. And these are instigating violence by those people who could never manage 
to control their emotions and oftentimes these people are not even aware of those emotions hidden somewhere deep into themselves and that is why it is necessary to work with them in order to make such feelings managed in the best way now regarding the most difficult periods for these couples and as we said, when the ability to move and go outside the, the house or the homes is restricted, when there is no opportunity to work, and when both spouses spend much more time together, which in this situation increases chances for violence significantly. There is another phenomenon which I would relate to re-victimization, which happens by the victim itself. And that is comparing to what the previous speaker said in regard to institutions. There is this something which we refer to as victim blaming. And the victim blames itself for what has happened to her or him and unfortunately they imply by themselves that this is a life that they have to live the previous speaker also mentioned the mentality and the attitudes in our country where often violence is taken for granted as part of the normal functioning of the family or upbringing and Others cert in certain times see it necessary to intervene when domestic violence happens. But all of these have consequences, not only on the victim directly, but also to a, a broader circle. Because children that are raised in such an environment are often traumatized from what they see, but to make it worse, they learn that this is the reality and this is how they should proceed themselves. With regards to the health and functioning of a victim which lives for an extended period of time in a condition of domestic violence, which is systematic, it is more than clear for everybody that her health, both physical, psychological, emotional, is uh, violated and it is not at the desired level. In order to break this cycle of violence within a family, the first step should be a quest for change or the need for change. This initiative should come from the victim itself, but also from the aggressor. Often we talk about rehabilitation of the victim, but what I want to say and underline is that it is also very important to rehabilitate and treat the aggressors or the perpetrators as well. When these aggressors, when they were young in their age, most of them experienced either direct violence or were witnesses of violence. That is why we are speaking of a category of people who carry on themselves many other traumas which are then displayed or become intolerable towards others when they manifest such violent acts themselves. If we look into the studies that were made on this topic, not only they confirm the need to treat the perpetrator, who if only is issued a sentence, after serving this sentence, they will continue with the same old story if there is no proper rehabilitation or change into their mental and psychological condition and attitudes towards his or her actions. 
So in addition to this, we should put emphasis on the rehabilitation of the victim, which we often say why the victim hasn't undertaken anything, but we should understand that a woman, a young female or a child, if they are victims of domestic violence, these persons lose self-confidence and they face difficulties to convince themselves that they are sufficiently strong to make the changes. So we need to empower them psychologically, but we should also work in making them as independent as possible in the social and economic aspects so that they are self-sustainable for a proper life. Why is this important? It is because we've seen many cases where a woman may have made a change if she had sufficient institutional support to also survive or live on her own. So we can read such cases from various uh, reports and there were women who reported their cases, but the service providers still do not have the sufficient capacity to support the victim all the way through. What does this mean? Often such lack of accommodation or sheltering for the victim makes the entire empowerment process for her much more difficult and not to mention her independent life. That is why after six months or one year of being trained or treated, these victims had no place where to go and they were not sufficiently made independent to be self-sustainable, to be able to pay for rental costs or to make their own living. And they had to go back to the perpetrator or the aggressor in the families where they used to live before. So in these cases, the violence not only continues, but the intensity of it escalates because there is an added anger on the perpetrator who will continue to punish the victim for going out of the house and seeking help. In regarding the consequences on health, we said that there might be psychological, but also health such as an anxiety, depression, inability to make right decisions in life and all of the elements that unfortunately have a negative impact on the lives of the victims and the family. I think I'm talking a lot, but perhaps I would only add a study which was done by Council of Europe in 2017. It's about empowerment of the fight against violence against women and domestic violence in Kosovo. And I was shocked by an information which is presented in this report. And this was given by age. It says that about 90% of uh, domestic violence cases in 2016 were not reported. When they were asked about the reasons not to report these cases, it's exactly what I mentioned, the fear of being stigmatized, fear from inability to be financially independent, and add there our mentality, which according to which these are considered intimate and private issues. But if we want to help and support in mitigating this violence against women and girls, children, we need to work with the whole community. We should not wait and intervene only after the cases are identified, but we should be proactively working in prevention through education, 
through such policies which help in changing perceptions and attitudes towards uh, domestic violence and our position about the domestic violence as well as finding the most adequate forms in punishing cases of domestic violence. I would perhaps not continue any longer on this topic, but I'd also like to mention the consequences on children who unfortunately are I will uh, I will come to this with the second question, Julieta. Thank you. Thank you. Super. No, it's uh, it's uh, it's really interesting and like um, it's really what you refer to. Th thanks a lot for your intervention. It's really this holistic approach, right? That we all have to take uh, when addressing and fighting against gender-based violence. And now we are at the fifth talk, uh, at the fifth of our women empowerment talk. And um, in the previous talk, we heard uh, um, institu other institutional representative judges, prosecutors victim advocacy office, other NGOs, and uh, th this has been the message uh, really reinforced by uh, by all speakers, <clears throat> and uh, it's really the need, um, and it's the only solution to effectively address and fight gender-based violence is to have this holistic approach, starting from education, and then to a coordinated and cooperated um, approach by all uh, service providers. And I found it very interesting how uh, you also mentioned that um, if, if the cycle of violence is not properly um, addressed and dealt with, then the next violence in the cycle it's even worsened because there is this added value of anger of the repression and um so even this even more gives us idea of how it's important to um to tackle with long-term solution all aspects of the cycle of violence so thanks a lot also for your intervention and now i will pass to the second question before we move on to katarina um and um, so, George, it's at the floor back to you. And um, Juliet already started talking about children. So um, I would like to talk a bit more about the, children, the phenomenon of children witnessing uh, violence and, um, and their mental health and the consequences of their mental health. And um, violence, we know that violence between parents can have a long term effect on their children. And uh, to this regard, you, we've been talking a lot about the Istanbul Convention uh, because of the recent inclusion in the Constitution. And um, uh, it's really um, uh, important how the Istanbul Convention also requires measures of protection to take into account the relationship between victim, perpetrator, and children, and the wider social environment, uh, which is really fundamental. And um, for example, the Istanbul Convention calls for especially support for children witnessing violence, including age appropriate counseling services. And um, are such measures taken in Kosovo and uh, is the aspect of mental health of children witnesses domestic violence properly understood, understood and addressed in Kosovo? Thank you, Georgica. Thank you. I would like to relate uh, to the holistic uh, approach. Even though the Istanbul Convention uh, calls for a holistic uh, approach in preventing uh, violence against women and raising awareness about this kind of violence and working with all uh, social institu uh, society institutions the Istanbul Convention requires protection for children witnessing violence. We in our system have very little opportunities or possibilities for such services. What we as an organization do is that we provide psychosocial support to children witnessing who have witnessed the violence. Uh, they're mainly teenagers. And uh, uh, this is when uh, cases when their parents are being divorced and when they're entering new families, for example, uh, the mother who has been victim so far is now uh, in a new role. And uh, we usually, usually see them for a longer period of time, both the mother and the children, because they are now establishing these new roles. Uh, the children, uh, see difficult because they have seen their mother in another role and now they see their mother in the role of an authority 
and this is where new conflicts appear and they must be solved through certain processes. The violence uh, survived by children have long-term implications for the children themselves, as my colleague previously said, because they are victims of, uh, the, of the violence in a domestic uh, environment. They're also then victims in the process of divorce. Uh, the Centers for Social Work are responsible for providing or ensuring the well-being of children and on the other side, they don't really see that the children are the victims. They don't see their best potential. They don't see their best interest in, in this situation, but they only see that children must have two parents or both parents. And very often we come to a situation that they insist that uh, the children see the, the perpetrator of the violence, the aggressor, so they're not provided in that occasion, adequate uh, support. And, and they don't say to children that they had the rights to have certain feelings and uh, opinions. So the children are brought into a, a situation where they feel they are also responsible. And this makes the situation very uh, much more difficult and causes the feeling of guilt among children. Uh, the other side, the, the perpetrator does not go through rehabilitation because, unfortunately, we don't have such prog programs. And the centers on the other side insist that the children see the father uh, because uh, uh, they don't see that uh, uh, a safe environment, uh, a loving environment is the best solution for the children. They only see that the, ch the child ha is not growing up with two parents. But the problem is that not all institutions are in, involved and there is no adequate response uh, about what this means in these situations. Uh, for example, the role of schools would be very important. The role of teachers uh, would also be very important as support uh, for every such ch child. It is also important to mention that when uh, uh, there is any kind of violence between the partners, uh, children are always victims of uh, violence uh, by the very fact that they are witnessing the violence. The implications of violence uh, are long-term for the children. Uh, these may be uh, um, psychological injuries that the children will carry with them throughout their life. And one of the ways to heal those wounds is to actually work with them. And in order to have this, we need the system to function in a holistic way. If one chain, one, one part of the system does not work, this process will stop. So this is something we need, really need to emphasize in this uh, so this holistic uh, approach and the uh, integrated uh, commitment for this goal in the best interest of the children thank you georgita for this uh, insight unfortunately not very good insight on the uh, current situation of uh, service provider response in kosovo uh, but indeed, like uh, the whole concept of uh, best interests of the child and how is this interpreted by institution, like you refer to the Center for Social Welfare, um, and how is this really taking into account and, uh, and whether institution, they really understand what it means, best in interest of the child. Um, and again, the reference exactly the only way forward as the integrated and holistic approach. Uh, Lulieta, your uh, opinion on this? Thank you. Uh, and Lulieta, sorry, I was told before if you can go into the Albanian channel when you speak, then it's easier for the interpreter. Of. Thank you. Arben, can you hear Lulieta? Yes, yes. Ah, okay, okay, sorry. sorry. With regards to a study, 
which I read some time ago because it was mentioned that I work with uh, children returned from Syria. There is this study carried out by Port et al. I think it was in 2016, a study which has shown the impact of being witness of domestic violence during childhood and impacts which are carried by children of these uh, individuals or persons. This study shows the effects that are carried on between the generations. And it showed that by only being witness of domestic violence has great impact on the health of the children of those uh, persons engaged in violence. This shows how much important it is for those children who might not experience direct violence, but by simply being part of the conflict, by observing or being a witness of any form, they have to be treated as well. If we want them not to carry on with these uh, trauma or consequences and not to transfer them to their own children after they grow up. Now, regarding the treatment of children that are traumatized during the time when they are witnesses of violence, to a certain extent, it is understandable that a child who sees the, its parents quarreling or engaged into some physical violence, in all of the cases, creates anxiety. Anxiety which is carried on for long on themselves. And often this is transformed into depression because a of violence often tries to undertake something to stop the violence but has no ca capacity or ability to make things better and this despite of him or her being young creates this senses of guilt as the child at that moment is not able to think that uh, he or she has no physical strength or other ability to interfere between parents. Now, such a child filled with anxiety often faces difficulties in his daily functioning because this brain of his that is always switched on in the form of survival and is busy processing anxiety does not have sufficient capacity at the same time or doesn't have the ability to work in his or her daily obligations. Why is this important to note? It is because in school, when they have to study, when they have to put their brains into function, often they fail to do so because of the situation through which they have been through. This should be an alarm bell with parents and teachers who note that this uh, change has come about after some time. So if a child is changing in his behavior, the teachers should understand that something may have happened in back in the family on his life that is preventing him to perform well at school. There are these services that need to be provided to these children that need treatment. We know that there are certain state institutions such as children's and teenagers psychiatry or various national organizations, international organizations, 
providing support for children, private institutions as well. But the problem is not as big in the sense whether such services exist or not, but rather access to the services. And if we address, or if these subjects address the services, often the possible impact on children is neglected by simply being witnesses of domestic violence. There are two possibilities, of course. There are children who grow up, they overcome the situation, they carry on the trauma, they are functional, but this trauma may be carried or displayed in certain moments which happen in situations similar to those when they experience the trauma. But then there are other children who stagnate in their social emotional development simply because of failure to treat such trauma. Often studies show that these children either re-victimize themselves by engaging into such a relationship with others that are destructive in, in a way, but may also become perpetrators themselves by imitating the behavior of the perpetrator next to whom they grew up. So are you able to hear me? Yeah. Yes, yes. You so can you follow? Very well, very well. Yeah, yes, thank you, thank you. So I lost the connection for a while, but what I want to give you as a message is that only a little is being done in the sense of working with the children, because the main reason is this, like diminishing the relevance of what children experience when witnessing domestic violence. We should be aware that such violence be it direct or indirect, by only being a witness in most of the cases damages children and at least one or the other dimension of their development. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Julieta, exactly like um, the impact of direct and indirect uh, violence. And uh, like you mentioned, I think uh, there has often been a lot of focus on direct uh, violence and not that much focus on the impact of indirect violence and how also and the implications of, uh, of indirect violence. And you also mentioned um, uh, how develop how a feeling of guilt, which also Georgisa mentioned earlier, can develop in uh, in children with this violence, which I found very interesting. Um, now um, I will give the floor to Katarina, um, and then I saw that there are some questions in the chat, but I would really like us to hear the story of Katarina, and then maybe after her we can give the floor back to our psychologist for a last key message. And they can also address uh, the question posed by uh, posed by Dubisha or other questions that might come. Um, let me just tell you, I had the honor of meeting Katarina at an event we held back in March 2019. And uh, for me, it was really uh, emotional to meet her, uh, such a strong and powerful woman. And, um, and that's why I wanted her to be here today to also share with you her story and how uh, accessing services helped her. And um, yeah, so Katarina, the floor is yours. And thanks again uh, to be here. It's, it's very important for, for all of us. Thank you. Hello, Puno. Thank you as well. Regarding the institutions from the very beginning when I left the hospital after what uh, everything that happened to me, after that violence, uh, domestic violence, there, I was sitting at home and after 13 days, uh, I didn't receive any help, uh, neither by institutions nor by the police, no support at all. And nobody asked me for a statement about what happened. At one uh, moment, Rožica Simic from Mitrovica heard about my case uh, and she called me 
and she referred me to uh, uh, who I should uh, address uh, to give a statement because nobody was asking me to give a statement about uh, this crime. 13 days later, I went to uh, Ivalia by myself and I asked to give a statement. When I got there, it is only then that they took my statement and it is only then 13 days later that uh, this whole uh, started. Then there were, uh, there was a judgment regarding the perpetrator. The judgment was only for three uh, years and eight uh, months for such, such a crime. In, uh, in five months, he will probably be released. And the eight months that uh, uh, have left for him to stay in prison, uh, they, they're talking about him being uh, uh, released. Uh, I don't feel, uh, this is not easy for me. I feel endangered because I know he will be out in five months. And for those two and a half years, uh, I have not uh, had any compensation at all. I addressed the court in Ivalia and I was told that uh, I was not entitled to compensation and uh, that my husband should compensate this to me, that they said that he couldn't do that because he didn't have any job because he was currently serving the sentence in Mitrovica. And this is how the two and a half years passed. Uh, I received absolutely nothing in terms of compensation. So 15 years ago, with the help from uh, Rožica Simic, uh, who told me that I'm entant entitled to this and referred me to uh, where I should go, uh, to Ardin Popai, who deals with victims of uh, the domestic violence. I went there some 15 days ago, and they told me that the papers have been submitted for compensation. Three days uh, later, I called him to ask him if uh, this was uh, finished and if the papers had been submitted. He said to me, I think uh, the papers have been submitted, and I now don't know if uh, this has really happened papers have been submitted or not and two years uh, two and a half years uh, from the from the event I have no I've had no compensation at all I don't know if my husband has been uh, released on weekend for example anytime I, I absolutely receive no information from the institutions at all And Katarina, could you, you already mentioned that um, you could access only like this service provided by NGO, but did you receive any other assistance, for example, um, more on your like psychosocial assistance from, uh, from institutions or your assistance was, was mainly provided by NGOs? Now, what, what is your um, personal history on this? Or? I did have support from NGOs, uh, Rožica Simic with her team. They came to Gracenica several times. I met them and uh, also with psychologists. And it is only them that provided me adequate support uh, with everything. And here in Kosovo, uh, they represent uh, the Mitrovica, actually, Mitrovica region, actually, and they have provided me everything they could until today. Rožica keeps calling me, Tiana as well, and I would really, really like to thank them, uh, to use this opportunity to thank them because they have been the only support for me uh, throughout this process. Thank you, Katarina. Thank you also, like, um, <clears throat> because of course your story also makes us understand even more that uh, we cannot just rely on, uh, on what uh, NGOs are out there. And, uh, and thanks God for NGOs like Ruzit Sawan to be out there. Uh, but of course your story uh, stresses even more how the institutional response uh, needs to be present. And unfortunately, it's not the case often at the moment. 
Um, Lulieta or Jujitsa, do you want to, to comment or on, on Katarina's, or like to comment, like to, what's your opinion also from what Katarina said and if any of you two wants to, yes, yeah, Lulieta, thank you. Firstly, I want to congratulate Katerina for her strength, for her ability to speak up openly about her case and her story, what she experienced. And of course, such uh, cases tell us about the needs victims of domestic violence have. These cases tell us and show us that each victim has its own individual specific needs. There should be programs which should follow the victim from the beginning to the end. And this should be a, pro, a coordinated program in the sense of the type of services to be provided to a particular person who needs concrete services or specific services. The emphasis should be put on, yes, there should be an individual plan tailor-made for a victim that has gone through such traumatizing events, but at the highest levels, we should see the main actors or stakeholders who are there to enable and provide services should cooperate between themselves in order to be able to provide and offer whatever is needed to a person that has gone through such violence. Without cooperation with between the central local levels and the community as a whole, none of the victims can be benefiting individually. Thank you. Thank you, Julieta. Exactly. Very interesting. Cooperation between local and central level. Thanks a lot. And Georgica, yes, I see you want to add something. I would like to add something about uh, what Katerina mentioned. Even though we are an organization in the north, uh, what uh, often happens is that we're called by the victims of violence. They often call us uh, from other uh, communities in Kosovo. And what uh, is also coming out from research is I'm sorry, the speaker is coming broken. The institutions uh, are not responding. And as uh, Rujica said, every victim needs support in such situations. If the victim has nobody to rely on, then we, uh, it happens that the victim tries to solve the situation uh, with their own hands in their own way. What uh, I, I also saw that Lubish asked the question whether there is an individual plan, which is not accredited in a way. Now, our organization during the pandemic created a protocol according to which the cooperation with the safe house in Novo Burdo because uh, there was a possibility that if uh, the victim of violence wanted to go to a safe house, then we would direct them to the safe house in Nishtina. Uh, but because of uh, communication with the members, uh, uh, because of the very language, uh, that maybe that wouldn't be the best way for the victim to feel 
safe. So we made this protocol according to which uh, in our, we can keep the victims in our offices for 24 hours. I'm sorry, the speaker is coming broken. I cannot understand. Uh, Georgica, unfortunately, we hear you broken, uh, but um, you were talking about the emergency protocol, exactly, and we, as ULEX, we, um, we supported also, um, um, the, yeah, when, when, when you created this, uh, this emergency protocol together with KP, with Kosovo Police and uh, the Children Over, the we tried to raise awareness about the existence of this emergency protocol. Um, but I guess, the, uh, yeah, and like you mentioned already, apart from this ad hoc initiative, I don't think there is any such uh, other um, integrated uh, response in Kosovo to answer to Lubisha. Um, I don't know if um, if also Lulieta maybe wants to, to say something on this. Um, Lubisha was asking uh, if there is a program that integrates full package of psychosocial support until the full integration of victim of GPV uh, in shelters and post shelter support. Um, um, mm -hmm. Recently, KRCT, the organization which I represent here, has done a needs assessment for children repatriated from Syria. During this assessment, we discussed also with centers for social work, which in their mandate have this coordination of services that need to be provided to families or individuals who seek for such assistance. As far as I heard, there is some sort of an assessment and families are given a profile as to what they need and what can be provided to them. Nevertheless, we could not find any further data because if the Center for Social Work cannot do any more, then who should be the next institution to intervene and complement those services that the Center for Social Work in that particular municipality cannot provide to the victims of violence? There was a case and I was pleasantly surprised this was in one of the municipalities, and I'm not going to mention any names due to confidentiality, but one of the municipalities accepted children repatriated from Syria, and the Center for Social Work there noticed that these children who did not have any of their parents needed intervention in many areas, including the psychological one. But the center did not have professional staff specifically trained to work with this highly vulnerable group as children returned from conflict zones or children who lost their parents and need to adapt themselves to a new environment. Unfortunately, these children did not even know Albanian when they came back to Kosovo, but their solution was to pay from their own budget a psychologist from abroad to help them. But this is more based on the goodwill of the director of that particular center, but it is not something which is routinely done or a standard operating procedure for that center. Therefore, a more proper coordination is required about the types of services and the time when these services have to be provided because Katarina said she waited 13 days to be discharged from the hospital and go the, herself and get to know about what she can get and what is available out there. So these services should be available timely because if they are provided Later on, this time gap would allow for 
perhaps worsening of the situation or for the situation to take rather not positive direction for the victim or at least to delay the rehabilitation or reintegration of the victim. Thank you, Lulieta. Thanks a lot. And thank you, Lubicha, also for raising this issue. We will definitely also insert um, uh, what you mentioned among our recommendations. Uh, also, Benina, I uh, saw so in the chat, she also referred to the, to the judgment from the Gilan court on the domestic violence murder case, where the court considered the presence of children and the fact that the victim had the one month old baby as aggravating factor in calculating the center. Thanks a lot, Benina, for this. And um, maybe when we send out uh, the, um, the studies and the reports that were mentioned today during the talk, I will also include uh, this uh, judgment that Benina referred to. Uh, Liliana also uh, also stressed the importance of the of the Istanbul Convention in requesting parties to ensure connection of the best interests of the child with the uh, violence against women, uh, women incident abuse. Thank you, Biliana, for this. And um, Elisa was asking Katarina, uh, what kind of conversation you ask for? Um, We, we can, you can speak, yeah. I think you are unmuted, yeah. Regarding the compensation for this case that happened to me, I was told that I was entitled, entitled to the compensation for the fear I uh, experienced. I have not received anything for two and a half years, and they only told me now that maybe this request have been submitted. I don't submitted. I don't have a specific uh, uh, or uh, an accurate response, so maybe it has been submitted. The reason why I ask for this is that there should be a compensation provided by the state, but the condition for that is for your case to be completed in the court. I do not know if you went to the court and if you have a final court decision. So if you have a final court decision, then you may address the victim's advocates or free legal aid who should or who would help and support you to fill out a request for compensation by the state, which is given by a commission or a committee for compensation of victims. I can forward to you the website of Ministry of Justice and there you can find the proper form. But the best would be if someone could advise you what type of compensation you can ask for violence, if you had any expenses you needed to pay in hospital medicine or so. So there is a possibility for state compensation provided that you have a final court decision. So there should be a final court decision as a precondition. But best advice could be given to you by victims advocates. And I do not know if you had the chance to see any such a victims advocate. Yes, I uh, did con have contact with him. That's the person I mentioned, uh, Arben. Uh, that's the... Uh, victim advocate uh, who represents women in cases of uh, domestic violence. Uh, I was referred to him and he told me that the request has maybe been submitted. So I'm still waiting for the response, uh, whether this has been completed or not. Okay, then I can follow up myself as well because I know Arlind and others. So. I can once again tell them to look into your case and once you are entitled for this compensation, they should be able to advise you where exactly to address it. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you for the support. Fala, Lisa. Lisa. Fala, and, um, I can hear the Serbian to that. Um, no, and I really like also that these platforms are also good from this point of view, you know, like for us to, to support each other. And um, uh, I, I don't know if uh, we're running a bit over the time as usual. Uh, if, if there is any other question on, I will put together all the comments that have been inserted in the, in the chat. Uh, I will also compile all the studies and reports that have been mentioned, the case law. And um, if there are no further questions, are there any other questions or comments from anyone? 
I don't see any in the chat. Uh, if not, uh, let me say a big thank you, Fala Puno to Katarina. Thanks a lot for, for coming out again and for telling your story uh, with all that that implies. So thanks, thanks a lot. And uh, we're all here to support you and to support victims and, uh, and also to work together with institutions to get to to get on the right way really to this holistic and integrated approach since it's really the only way forward. And thanks a lot for thanks, thanks a lot for this empowering and inspiring talk. And we will definitely have more talks during the next year until uh, the end of our mandate, current mandate in June. So uh, maybe there will be other opportunity for us to meet up and talk and to raise more and more awareness about this topic. So thanks a lot, everybody. Uh, thank you, and I wish you a good weekend ahead, and uh, see you soon. Thank you. Thanks a lot.